AI updates today from Google, Microsoft, Meta, and Amazon. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Boy, I gotta say, closing out the week, everyone decided to announce things in the last little part of the week. Like I said, we have announcements from basically every big tech company, and hey, our main episode is going to be about Apple, so it really is everyone. We're going to kick it off with Google, where Bard has gotten some major updates. The first has to do with where it is available. Bard is now available in over 40 languages, and people are reporting really good results. Varun Krishnan writes, wow, Google Bard with latest update has gotten quite good. Understands even a mix of Tamil and English. Tried it with other languages too, and it's incredible. Jack from the Bard team was also really excited about this. He said, blind evaluations with our third-party raters identified Bard with Gemini Pro as one of the top-performing conversational AIs compared to leading paid alternatives. Now, as part of bringing Bard to more languages, Google also expanded what they call their double-check feature. Basically, whenever you click on the little G icon inside Bard, the program goes out and looks to see if there's content on the web that substantiates its response. You can click on highlighted phrases and learn more about either supporting or contradicting information that's found by traditional Google search. And yet, without a doubt, the thing that people are talking about most is that image creation is now integrated in Bard natively as well. Their announcement post writes, For an extra creative boost, you can now generate images in Bard in English in most countries around the world at no cost. This new capability is powered by our updated Image Gen 2 model, which is designed to balance quality and speed, delivering high-quality photorealistic outputs. They also announced that images created with Bard will use SynthID to add digital watermarks into the pixels of any images that they generate. One thing that people are noticing is that it seems to perform really well with words. I haven't had a chance to really look at this systematically yet, but some are even suggesting that it does words better than Dolly 3. Now, given that this is free, you have to think that this just significantly increased Bard's competitiveness in the AI space. Over in Microsoft land, the company has been slowly rolling out its Copilot across its suite of 365 products, and Copilot for Sales and Copilot for Service is now generally available following the general release of those tools for applications like Outlook, Word, and PowerPoint that came over the last several weeks. They call Copilot a, quote, AI assistant designed for sales teams to maximize productivity and close more deals. It can do things like generating sales meeting preps in Word, summarize emails in ways that surface relevant buying intent, adding leads and updating CRM records, and a number of other capacities as well. Copilot for Service, they say, quote, unlocks an organization's trusted knowledge to accelerate onboarding and case resolution, improve efficiency, and automate tasks for agents in their flow of work. Without costly development time, organizations can simply point to their data and, in a few minutes, unlock generative AI-powered conversations across their knowledge bases. And so, if the theme of the year is integration of generative AI tools into our existing workflows, this hits that nail pretty well on the head. Over in MetaWorld, we got a report from Reuters that the company is planning to deploy their in-house customized chips this year. Now, their source is an internal company document that was seen by Reuters, and the goal is, of course, to reduce dependency on NVIDIA. Now, that said, of course, Meta has touted just how many chips they're going to be buying from NVIDIA this year. And when it comes to compute, it's really not an either-or, but a both-and, as everyone just needs more computing power. A spokesperson confirmed the story in a statement saying, We see our internally developed accelerators to be highly complementary to commercially available GPUs in delivering the optimal mix of performance and efficiency on meta-specific workloads. Now let's head over to Amazon, where the company has announced Rufus, which they call a new generative AI-powered conversational shopping experience. This is ChatGPT for shopping on Amazon. As they put it, this is a shopping assistant that they say is trained on Amazon's product catalog that can help customers answer questions on everything from shopping needs to products to comparisons. And again, is one of those sort of boring products on the face of them that will be used by basically everyone. The example they give is a user who's trying to figure out which running shoes to buy. They might start with a question like what to consider when buying shoes. As they get farther along, they might have different questions like what are the differences between trail and road running shoes? Finally, as they hone in on a specific pair, they might want to compare them or ask about a potential option. For example, a question like, are these durable? Now, Rufus will be available initially through the Amazon Shopping app, and customers will be able to type or to talk into it to get Rufus to answer. Initially, it will be rolled out only to a small handful of customers, but that will expand over time. Some think that it doesn't go far enough into a next-generation shopping experience. Amber Atherton writes, Amazon's Rufus AI shopping agent is very Amazon-focused on product comparisons and reviews. Give me the fun shopping agent that sits in my browser, surfaces and buys all the things for me based on my inputs and browser history. Finally, a fun and very quotable statement from Sam Altman in an interview with investor Alexis Ohanian. 
Sam argues that at some time in the not-too-distant future, a one-person company will be able to hit a billion-dollar valuation. That is a heck of a thought and a fun one to think about as we head into the weekend. For now, however, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Up next, the main AI Breakdown. <laughs> 